I am so excited to be with you today. Worship Summit Live. This is awesome. I know that so many of you are dealing with how do I reach my community online? What can I do right now so that I can share the gospel with people in my community? Well, I've got some ideas. And so I'm going to go ahead and let's get started. We're the loneliest we've ever been. So tech has brought us more connections than we've ever had, uh, but it's brought us fewer friends. And so the stats tell us that actually loneliness is on the rise. More than 60% of Americans reported feeling lonely just in 2019. So imagine how lonely they're feeling today, right? Probably, I would say it's up to like 70 or 80%. Uh, it's an increase of 7% just from the year before. So in 2018, it was 52%. Now it's 60% in 2019. So we're, I mean, I can't imagine this pandemic, how it's, how it's affected the loneliness, right? Uh, because loneliness and stress uh, may actually put us more at, at greater risk for COVID-19. So what can the church do to offset that, I think is the question. Um, it also says, the stats also said that the percentage of American adults reporting that they had no one to confide in has tripled since the 1980s. And here's the thing, the church is uniquely positioned to provide community in a time such as this. So I can get a great sermon through YouTube. I can get great worship music through Spotify, but there is just really no great place for me to find community right now online other than the church. And it's not just one generation that's lonely. Every generation is lonely. These are actually columns that were done in the last three years. Okay. And all of these columns from USA Today, New York Times, uh, I think one of them is maybe the LA Times, have said, uh, Gen Z's loneliness, millennials are the loneliness, baby booners are the loneliness. So you're not alone. Everybody is lonely. Uh, so we know it's difficult to find opportunities to share the gospel. It's especially difficult to, spot, to find opportunities to share the gospel when we're isolated, when we're told to shelter at home, when we're not allowed to leave. Uh, it's not like you could really easily share the gospel uh, at a grocery store right now. So what if we could use the internet to create relationships with people that are far from Christ? Uh, the ways we've always done it aren't necessarily working, and uh, not that they weren't working so well before. I think they probably have worked in the past, uh, but, you know, tracks are awkward. Uh, everybody's handed out a track in their life. Some of these things are outdated. If anybody remembers the $20 track, uh, it's super, super awkward. And some of them are just not any fun. If anybody remembers the Q works in some countries. I don't think it works too well in the United States. Uh, none of them are conducive to relationship building. All of them are just uh, preaching at, not learning with, right? And I think that all life change happens in the context of relationship. And so how do we start building relationships? How can we gain trust without intimidation? And so the new evangelism is online. I've been saying this for years now, so this is not something relatively new, uh, but this is uh, the way that I think, uh, especially right now during this pandemic, that God has called us to. And so I was this age when I started my first online community. I was nine years old, and I started an online community, actually for Harry Potter fans. Uh, we won an award from J.K. Rowling, so I guess it worked. But what I found during that time that was really unique is that there were there were probably over 10,000 members and I got to share my life with them daily. And what was really unique is that I got to share the gospel with all of these people online I would have never met in person. And so what a unique time that we can do the same thing today, right? We can create these communities online around certain niches and share the gospel with people where they are sitting at home. And so. I actually created this church communications Facebook group. You can find it on, on Facebook. It's church communications. PCZ Optics has been a great partner of ours. But um, the group, I thought I would find maybe 100 people doing church communication work, right? What I ended up finding was there's 21,000 at that point when I took the screenshot. We've had 24,000 now that uh, the live streaming has kind of blown up. And so there are so many people, so many real people online. Who are doing the same thing you're doing and they needed the community too right they needed to find answers they needed to find help and so what's really interesting i'm gonna take a moment to back up a little bit what is really interesting is that facebook history models church history okay it's pretty wild so uh, facebook 
actually, let's go back. Churches, most churches, when you're building a church, you're just starting a church, okay? You're a brand new church, you're a church plant, maybe. Most of the time, the first 10 years of a church is all just about getting people in the door. But then after you've built the church, you've got members, it's really about getting people into meaningful small groups, right? Uh, where they're really connected, where they feel like they're known, where they're living a purpose, God's purpose through, for their life in community. Uh, and Facebook actually figured out that that's what they wanted to do. So back in 2016, Facebook uh, and Mark Zuckerberg, he changed the model of Facebook. It used to be all about just getting people on the platform, right? He would celebrate. We got 1 million, billion people on the platform. We have 2 billion people. We have 3 billion people on this platform. And then he realized, what are we doing with all these people? He was like, I really, he changed the whole model. He was like, I really feel like we, I want to get people connected into a meaningful community. And so he actually went on a tour of America. I don't know if y'all remember this back in like 2017, he went on this tour. He visited a bunch of churches and, and he learned a lot about small groups and what churches were doing with small groups. And that's why he like Facebook's always had groups, but he changed his whole model to be more about more centric on Facebook groups. Okay. So how can we as the church leverage Facebook groups so that we can share the gospel? Because Facebook is putting all of their time, energy, and money into all the into groups more than they are pages, more than they are the personal timeline. They really just want people involved in meaningful community. So this is my super secret plan to convert people using Facebook groups. It's not really a secret plan. That's a joke. Um, but how can we use Facebook groups to create communities that are meaningful, that people feel like they belong? Okay, so let's make a plan. I want you to think of a group that you can start, make a plan for that group, and then reach your community with the gospel. So let's think about some groups that you could create. So right now, of course, you may not be able to get out and actually do some of these activities, but I bet you can probably find a bunch of people in your neighborhood that love these um, activities. And so you could start groups around these activities. You could also start needs-based groups. I think that's really important during the pandemic. I'll talk about that again, again a little bit later at the end. But um, there are groups uh, that are already started in your neighborhood that you can join and contribute to as well. But here are some niche ideas, right? So kayaking with kids, maybe uh, Denver, hi sorry, Denver hiking, Clanton knitting, Birmingham millennials, Atlanta Harry Potter fam. Uh, I think it's really important that you include this uh, local name because uh, it helps with finding it, helps with SEO essentially. But, you know, you can create any sort of niche. I just saw one the other day, a Facebook group called From My Window or From Your Window. And in the last two days, 10,000 people have joined this Facebook group, okay? Because people are looking for great content that takes their mind off of what's happening outside, okay? So, although it's funny because this is literally pictures of people's outside, but they want to be reminded that there are people around the world, right, that are, uh, that are feeling the same way they're feeling. So, find a niche. There's so many. Just find something that you love. So, just think about, like, what do you love doing, okay? Maybe it is um, you love fishing. Maybe you love uh, writing. Maybe you love running. And start a group to talk about running right now, right? So I bet there's so many different trails and stuff that people that are still open. Talk about the trails that are still open. Take pictures, share advice, you know, on social distancing, that kind of stuff. Okay, the most important thing that I found for a strategy that actually works is that they're not actually related to your church. So you can create a group for your church. I highly recommend that you do create a group for your church. The page is really an outside facing thing where you should share stories of uh, what Christ is doing in people's lives and baptism and stuff like that. Uh, but the group for your church would be something that's really internal and sharing, you know, uh, the announcement, stuff like that would be something that would happen in your Facebook group. But I'm talking about creating these external Facebook groups, right? They're very evangelistic focused, okay? This, this is all about outreach. It's not really about um, creating a group where people just in your congregation can talk. You can create one of those, but I'm saying these are evangelistic groups. So figure out how you can create relationships so that later you've created these amazing relationships during this quarantine. You can invite them to church later after you've started all these relationships, okay? 
Okay, so let's make it practical. How do I actually do this? You can create a private or a public group. I used to recommend not creating public groups, uh, but right now I think that honestly, it, uh, it doesn't matter. Create a private or a public group. What I like about private groups is that you can ask questions like, have you read the rules? Um, and also maybe collect email addresses. I think collecting email addresses upon entry is really important. And of course, ask them for their email and say, you don't have to give us your email because opting in is important uh, and illegal. So when you're creating a group, naming is important. You do not want to be cute or clever. You want to be clear, okay? Thanks, Donald Miller, for that from StoryBrand. Uh, it has to be really clear about what you're doing. So if you are in Birmingham, Alabama, and you want to create a group for running, it needs to be Birmingham running, okay? It needs to be, uh, if you're doing Birmingham business leaders, Birmingham business leaders, okay? It needs to be very clear about what you're trying to do and the kind of people you expect to join. And then you're going to have to create some rules. So great, Facebook has actually started creating these very uh, normal uh, generic rules for you. So you will have a set of generic rules, but think about some rules that would apply only to your community. I mean, they will probably come up as you go on, but you know, think about what do you want people not to do, but more importantly, do you think about what you want them to do? And so talking about what do you want them to do, you know, you're going to need to create some different ideas for sharing every week. That's kind of a prompt, right? That will help people understand what they need to share every week. So what are you working on Friday? Um, share your most recent hiking picture Sunday. Like where did you hike this weekend? If you're doing like a hiking group, right? Um, you could share pictures, uh, start threads that ask people to engage. You can use a lot of different tools for this. Recur post is free. Social B is not that expensive. Uh, anything that's gonna post an evergreen content thing on a weekly basis. And then what's really important is you want to invite 10 real life friends and explain to these friends what you're doing, uh, but not in the group in person. I said that in person, but back when we could be in person, explain to them over maybe a Facebook messenger thread, right? What you're doing. Uh, we don't want the whole world knowing that this is our secret plot to convert people. So explain to them uh, what you're trying to do. Ask those 10 friends to invite 10 of their friends. So now you've got 100 people in this group about running. And then Facebook's going to think you're super popular. And they're going to actually feature and promote your group for free. So what I will do is actually wait until a ton of people want to join my Facebook group. And I'll let them all in at one time. And that's because it triggers Facebook to think, oh, this is a very popular group. Everybody should join it. So that's just another idea. I really do believe that life change happens in the context of a relationship and we can start those relationships online. Okay, so the question I often get is, is this working? You know, and I honestly have the moments where I'm not so sure that it is. Uh, but I got this great message the other day, actually a few months ago before all this uh, happened. It said, Katie, I'll read your podcast. I, I, I talk about this on some podcasts. Uh, you're your podcast gave me the nudge to finally put myself out there and join a Facebook group, an interest-based community group. I, I've been seeing these posts about a neighborhood walking group, but I felt like putting my introverted self out there with a bunch of strangers would be overwhelming. But tonight I took the plunge. I joined their Facebook group and got in on their evening walk. The nine of us plus two dogs had a lovely 30 minute walk around the lake and then took a group selfie before one of the ladies sent us off with homemade pickles and applesauce. It might be one of the best gospel opportunities I've had in a long time. Okay, so this is something that can happen after we're done, after uh, done with shelter in place, right? If you start con contributing to your community, maybe your neighborhood Facebook group, you might already have one, right? Or maybe you need to start one. If you start contributing to it, you're going to become well known in your neighborhood, right? And then afterwards, start a walking group, right? Start a, a yard sale, start something where the people have to come out of their houses and communicate, okay? Uh, and then what I loved is uh, out of this, so I've been talking about reaching your community online for the last three years. My moderator from Church Communications, Brandon Rogers, created this Facebook group called NILA Needs. It's Northeast Louisiana Needs. It's a community response to the coronavirus. There's nothing on here that says their church owns this space. 
And so it has been really well used. Within 24 hours, they had 4,000 members. Uh, when I took the screenshot, they have 7,400. I bet they probably have 8,000, near 8,000 today. And so what they said is this is a group for sharing and organizing community resources in response to COVID-19. This group is for organizing Northeast Louisiana on the grassroots level to ensure vulnerable community members have access to food, housing, healthcare, and other necessities. Like I said, this is a needs-based Facebook group. Uh, it's also for the free distribution of resources. In that case, that stockpiling prevents people from assessing uh, basics. And so they created this awesome Facebook community that grew, like I said, 4,000 members joined within, four, uh, within 24 hours. And so I asked Brandon, I was like, is there any really great stories that you can share that have come out of this Facebook group for people I've been helping? Well, this woman, Gail, apparently has been helping quite a bit. So she jumped into the group, and this is what Brandon said. So Gail saw what our group was doing and jumped in pretty significantly. On her own accord, started to work with members of the group to deliver groceries because we're not wanting to touch people's money. The church doesn't want to do that. So she's kept herself accountable by posting pictures of the receipts into the group of the groceries she's buying and delivering to people in their trapped homes. So as people are posting food needs, others in the group are sending Gail money and she's following through completely on her own. Probably $15,000 in groceries over this past week, all given from members in the group for the most part. Additionally, he said, as she's been going to Walmart grocery store so much, people have started to ask what she was doing with so much food and people at Walmart. So Walmart employees themselves actually started to give her money to help people in need. And here's a picture actually. So Gail posted this picture. Employees are literally pulling out money from their pockets to give and help out with this because they were so astonished that people were helping out. And so Gail's not a member, I don't think, of Brandon's church. And she might be, I don't know. But I don't think that she is. She's just a community member who really, really cares and wanted to be a part, right? And so what is really cool is that after all this is over, um, praise God, hopefully it will be over soon. Um, after this is over, the church, Brandon, is going to have control of this group of 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 members of his community, of his immediate community that he can then help spread the gospel to and create these community events and really connect people like he's been doing for the last week. And it's just been wild. It's been great PR for his church. They actually ended up doing a, a news thing talking about this group. And so anyways, it's just such a fantastic story of how this group. So the question really is, what is the first goal of our social media channels? Was it to get people to our events? Because we can't anymore anyway, but it was to minister to them where they already are online. Billy Graham, he once said, I am amazed at the wonders of technology, and I'm grateful for the ways in which we're able to use it to share the gospel around the world. And so I hope that this was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, KDJAllred. You can join me at churchcommunications.com, KDAllred.com. I'm a Story Brand Certified Guide. You can search for Church Communications Group on Facebook. And if you would like, you can download these slides at churchcommunications.com slash group today. Again, that's churchcommunications.com slash group today. If you want to download these slides, um, maybe I went a little too fast for you. You can download these slides anytime you want. So thank you so much for having me today. It's been awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. You are the best. We have seven